Our final section for this week looks at remedies or what happens when there has been a breach of contract. Remedies deal with how the courts and the law treat the situation where one party has breached their part of the deal or their part of the contract. There's a number of options available. Um, often it does rely on damages, but there are some equitable remedies available, which we'll go through. In, in this subject, we're really going to concentrate on partial performance, where a party breaches one or more terms, um, and understanding whether the other party can terminate the contract and sue for damages, or just sue for damages. So there's a big difference there, whether you can terminate the contract or not. And to understand that difference, we need to look at the difference between uh, a condition and a warranty. The terminology is critical. Um, a condition is a term of the contract that's fundamentally important. It really means that the other party wouldn't have entered the contract without that term in there. If we have a breach of a condition, the other party has an option. It can confirm the contract and get damages, or it can actually terminate the contract and get damages as well. So if we have a condition being breached, it gives you the option to escape from the contract. In contrast, a warranty, which is a term of lesser importance, won't allow you to escape the contract. It just means that the injured party will still have to perform their contract, but can get damages um, to make up for the loss that they've suffered because of the breach. So the really big difference is the only remedy for a breach of warranty um, is damages or, or, or an equitable remedy, but they can't escape the contract. Whether a term is a conditional warranty is, like most of the other things in contract determined objectively, based upon what a reasonable person would expect of the parties so contracting. To understand this, we can contrast two cases. The first, Associated Newspapers and Banks. In this case, Banks enters a contract with Associated Newspapers to prepare comic drawings for, of Ginger Megs. Associated Newspapers promises that those cartoons are gonna be on the front page of the comics section. For three weeks in a row, um, the newspaper puts them on page three of the comic section, not the front page. Uh, Banks seeks to terminate the contract. In this case, the courts held this was a condition that Banks wouldn't have entered this contract unless they would have, unless they promised, unless the newspapers promised to put it on page one. And by them not putting it on page one and not putting it on several times, uh, they breached a condition and banks could therefore terminate the contract as well as get damages. Notice if it had been a warranty, the condition still would have been in place um, and banks still would have had to keep producing for them. But this allowed him to get out of the contract and potentially seek other newspapers in which to place the Ginger Megs cartoon. We can contrast this with Bettini and Guy. This involves a performer, Bettini, who's a singer, and the promoter, Guy. So they enter into a contract where Bettini is going to sing at various events over about a four-month or a 15-week period. Prior to those performances, Bettini was obliged to go to rehearsals for six days, make sure everything's okay. But, but, they, but Bettini actually misses four of those days of rehearsals because they're sick. Guy tries to get out of the contract. So the issue here is, is rehearsal a, term, a condition or a warranty? It's clearly a term of the contract, but is it a fundamental term, a condition, or is it merely a warranty, something that some, a, a term that would be injurious to Guy, but you still would have entered into it without um, the assurance of these six days of rehearsal? In this instance, the court held it was a warranty. The key part was actually performing. So as a warranty, the contract was still in place and Guy couldn't terminate the contract but could only claim damages. We can contrast that with the case of um, Poussard and Spires and Bond 
where it was actually an opera singer who missed the opening night. The court in that, in that case said that missing the opening night was a condition of the contract because it was fundamental to the success of the opera. How well it went on opening night would, could have a huge impact on the future success of that particular production. And as such, missing that performance was a condition, and so it allowed um, the aggrieved party uh, to terminate or rescind the contract. So the contrast in importance you can see between rehearsals, between missing some, even a fair bit of the rehearsals, and between missing opening night as to give us an idea of that difference between a condition, a fundamental part of the contract, versus a warranty, uh, just part of the terms of the contract. What actually happens when there's a breach? Really, one of the key remedies that we have available is damages. Uh, damages are available for any breach of contract, whether it's a total breach of contract, partial breach, whether it's an actual breach or an anticipatory breach. An anticipatory breach um, occurs where um, you might say, I'm not going to fulfill my part of the bargain. So you know someone's not going to pay you, for instance. Uh, well, that can be an anticipatory breach of contract. Um, uh, you can get damages, whether it's a condition or a warranty, whether it's the breach of a collateral contract or whether it's a misrepresentation. The key role of damages is to put you back into the position you would have been uh, if the contract had have come to fruition. It's to compensate you uh, for, the, for the damage that has been caused to you. So we can see there that the key point is to restore the person uh, who has had their legal rights infringed on and put them back in the position they would have been in if the breach or misrepresentation hadn't occurred, as if the contract had been performed properly. We also have, in certain circumstances, equitable remedies. These are the kinds of cases where damages aren't enough, where what you actually need is a specific action performed, which is specific performance. So it, in those instances, the court orders a party to fulfill their contractual obligations. Contrast that with an injunction, and an injunction um, is where the court stops or forbids someone from doing something. Equitable remedies are actually very difficult um, to establish in contract law for lots of different reasons that we don't have time to go into. They are available in very specific situations, um, such as you want to buy this block of land with a particular view when you have a contract. Um, you might use specific performance in order to make sure that you get that piece of land, because an alternative piece of land can't really get that view, um, etc. It's that kind of situation, which is quite rare. There's also um, a lot of limitations on equitable remedies. Um, for instance, the slave principle, which says you can't actually force someone to do something to become their slave. So there are lots of limitations around equitable remedies. They are available in really um, unusual circumstances.